Hey everyone, this is Prince from DC Programmer. Welcome back to yet another exciting video. And in this video, we are going to add live streaming to our application in less than five minutes. Now this video is sponsored by Zero Cloud, which is a great tool for building interactive apps with voice and video chat API. Zero Cloud's products include SDKs for building video calls, in-app chat applications, voice call, adding virtual 3D avatars, AI effects, and live streaming. But what's great about Zero Cloud is that it also has a lot of pre-built UI kits so that you don't have to write a lot of code. You can easily start using their great services like video call, live streaming, screen sharing, virtual avatar, whiteboard and whatnot in your application. So as you can see here, these are all the SDKs and UI kits available. These can be used in a variety of situations. For example, social, education, telehealth, live shopping, fitness, collaboration and whatnot. And you can easily see that with just a few lines of code, you can get started using your SDK. Moreover, on top of that, Zero Cloud also gives you 10,000 free minutes to build and test your application. Just fill all the basic details that is required, click on get started and your account will be created. Now, once you have created an account, you will go to the console where you may not have any projects listed if it's a new account. You can simply click on create a project, choose any base use case for your application, click on next, add, use a UI kit that you want and you can get started. If you need more help, you can watch these previous videos where I have added Zego Cloud in the application and I have shown the same process in great detail. Now, once you have any of your application up and running, you can go to the project configuration page by simply clicking on the project and you can see in the services management. These are all the services that are up and running. Now, most of the services will be enabled by default. For some of them, they are free to use. You may just have to message the team to enable the service and, and a very few like signaling may need an upgrade. But what's more interesting here is that you should have this app ID and app sign saved with you. You should copy this. You should click on the I icon which should show your app signature and you should copy that too. Always remember to keep your app ID and app signature secret and never share it with anyone as then they can misuse your account and credit. Now once you have all that up and running, you can come to Zego Cloud Docs and here I'm going to choose live streaming. Also remember that we have a lot of UI kits, something that I'm going to use. So this is for SDK where you are going to implement everything on your own. I'm going to use a live streaming UI kit, which will have the UI up and running for me. So this is a live streaming kit. I'm going to use this in Flutter and you will see that the entire setting up process is very simple. So let me help you get started with that. As you know, we already have our project up and running. All that you have to do is to go to perspect.yaml file and you have to add this dependency. We have Zego UI code pre-built live streaming. Once you've added that, we are going to have a live streaming dot page. Now this page itself, I'm going to create two widgets. Okay. First one is going to be my stateful widget. I will call this live stream base page. The, this is base page because what I'm going to do here is that I'm going to have two buttons using that you can either join the live stream or you can you know, uh, add, start your own live stream. So in the body, I'm simply going to have a column and that column is going to have two elevated buttons. So we have a start live stream and we have join live stream. I'm going to copy this and in the gym login page, remember we need to connect to gym kit core only then we can use any of the services. So as you can see, we are right now pushing to gym chat list page. I'm going to comment it out and I'm going to use the same thing. The only difference is that now I need to push to this live streaming page. So I'm going to comment this thing out now. And finally, I'm going to just import it. You can see that you will come here and this will have these two buttons. I'm going to save this and here I can just simply enter some detail, click on connect. Now this is the one that I'm already using. As I've said, one, 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 and one, two, one, two, one, two. These are the IDs that I'm already using and we need an ID to start a live stream. So once we are here, now we have two buttons and both of them, these will start a live stream. So what I need is another class, which actually has the live stream page. I'm going to call that as live stream. Okay. Or Zego, Zego live stream. So we have an STF visit. I'm going to call it as Zego live stream. This will actually render the live stream for us. So in the return, what I'm simply going to return is this Zego UI pre-built live stream. So you have to type this Zego UI pre-built okay, live streaming. Now this has a few details. As you can see, it's asking for app ID. It's asking for app signature, user ID, username, live and whatnot. I'll go over each of this one by one. Actually, it's very simple. App ID, as we all know, is going to be the app ID that you should copy from there. App ID and app signature. I have added that them in this config.dot file so that I don't have to copy and paste a lot. And also it won't be visible. Then you have user ID. Now, these are the things that I'm going to just grab from the visit. So we are going to have things like final uh, string UID. Then I'm going to have a 
username you are going to have a live id and then we have to add a config so all that i need to do right here now is finally i'm going to simply call wizard.uid then i'm going to call wizard.username sorry and then i'm going to call wizard.liveid and finally we need a config so now right now i'm going to hard code it it what it means is that i'm going to actually just hard code the configuration that if the wizard dot uid is equal to this one 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 six times if this is true then what i'm going to do is that i'm going to say jago kilt ui pre-built live streaming config dot host sorry dot and host or if this is false then we are going to have jago ui kit live streaming config dot and this is going to be audience okay so these are the configuration basically the different type of buttons which will be rendered for host and audience now once you have done all that i have to do is to grab all these values here as i have this up and running again as i'm going to tell this to you again that if you are actually using this you know application you need your own database or something where you can actually store all this data you can store with online what is their what is the live id and stuff like that so that you can facilitate this entire process right now I'm just showing you how this is going to work. So for example, I have hard coded here that this is this UID. If it is uh, six times one, there is going to be host. You have to actually pass such value and check whether the user ID is joining is a host or it's an audience. Right now here we have start live stream and join live stream. Again, I'm going to keep both of them simple. In a start live stream, again, user is going to start. So we are going to have something like navigator and I'm going to push to this material page route. So here in our builder, what I'm returning is this jago live stream okay so we have user id username and live id so many things again i'm going to simply just uh, hard code it or user id we can get from the zimkit user id too anyway username i'm going to just say start this person has started the live stream the live id is crucial again just as i said you have to generate a value store it in your database and then render it here i'm simply going to add a random value like one two three one two three okay and live uh, live id is mandatory because whatever live id you are using if this is same then all like uh, with a single live id all the users can join a single live i think that's pretty self defined the uh, doesn't need much of the explanation now if you remember in the jago chat list page i have shown you how to uh, get the conversation id now what's left is user id so i'm just going to you know hard code it that if the user id is six time once only then we are going to you know like start a live stream and then for a joining live stream again you know this shouldn't be 111 so i just need to copy the same code and all that we need to do is to use a different uid now remember what you have to do in your application is that you have to get the data from your database or something like that and you have to ensure that you are passing this value like you're putting some restriction that if this is a user id you maybe should not be able to join or you can check here that if the user id is same then you can start that person as a host may seem a little confusing right now let's restart this and let's see what's going to happen we're going to come to this uh, uh, login page so i'm going to enter username it's the same one uh, six time once i'm going to keep the username both of them simple let's click on start live stream and this is the page that you're going to get okay when you click on this you have this uh, features for skin tone blusher smoothing sharpening you can use that to beautify your face and then you can click on start and this will start a live stream I know you can't see much right now. I'm going to show you this on a physical device too. But as of now, you can see that you have this option to send messages bit during a live stream. Then you have this option to basically do some kind of face beautification again. Then you have this to add different kind of audio effects. Then you can use this to turn the camera. And finally, you can use this to turn off the camera and you can use this to turn your mic on or off. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to close this and I'm going to start the same live stream on a physical device and then I'm going to show you how it looks like. Okay, so finally I have restarted both the application and here I'm going to log in with this ID because here I'm going to join the stream and I'm going to log in with the triple six, uh, six time once ID in my phone so that you can show the stream. Now the best thing is that Zero Cloud takes care of all the edge cases such as whether the stream had started or not, if the stream had started, whether the host is online or not. And so many such cases like if, with, if there's an issue with the network and whatnot. And if you're trying to do something on your own, it's going to take, well, really hard work. So I'm going to click on start live stream on my other device, which will start a live stream. Okay, we go to the same process and whatnot. And finally, we have a live stream up and running. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click, click, going to click on join live stream here. And as you can see, this is the live stream that I get.
So let me show you a few more things, few more uh, easy additions. For example, uh, if I click on the audio, I can now, you know, turn the audio on or off. And if I click on this, then I can even change my audio to different audio samples. For example, karaoke, deep, robot, little girl and whatnot. I'll show you a simple sample with little girl. And to do that, I have to kind of set the audio input capture to off. And that's, let's go. So this is little girl audio sample from my phone. I don't know how it sounds. I will learn more about it while I'm editing the video. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it from my side in this video. I have shown you how you can simply start your own live streaming application in just a few minutes and you can see the differences in options for example when we were host you can see a lot of buttons as a user you can only see this button to send a chat message so well i'll see you soon in the next video till then keep coding keep loving keep sharing and peace